Welcome to Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motoring news and features TV and online magazine. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall discuss about the looming shortage on buses, our road safety reminder in Yonge Street Smart Sports and Centers on who has a right of way when there is no stop line on the main road. This week's Spying Japan shall be about wearing the proper uniform of PUV drivers. Showcase this week shall have the pickup from Mitsubishi, the Strata Athlete Black Series. All these plus the latest news in transportation and traffic management, as well as developments in the automotive industry, are on this week's edition of Motoring Today. Join us! Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Strata Athlete. Unleash the athlete. Suzuki El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. Welcome back to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. The government is looking out for the welfare of commuters and students about to head back to schools. The free ride on the MRT3 is over. The new administration has decided that the government can no longer afford to extend the Libreng Sakai program on the MRT3. However, President Bongbong Marcos has approved extending free rides on EDSA carousel buses until the end of the year. At the same time, the President has approved the recommendation of the Department of Transportation to grant free rides on the MRT-3, the Light Rail Transit 2, and the Philippine National Railways to students for the first quarter of the incoming school year are from August to November. More than 38,000 schools are expected to resume their face-to-face -face classes for the next school year. The DOTR said that extending the free rides of the Etsy Carousel and providing free train rides to students will ease the burden of rising living expenses on Filipino families and help them save money, especially with the return of face-to-face -face classes after more than two years. The DOTR estimates an average of 6,153 students will be taking the L82 and the MRT3 daily when school starts in August. Providing affordable and efficient mass transportation for commuters and students is one of the major challenges of the new administration. Subsidies and free rides will help, but those are seen as stopgap solutions. <music> Meanwhile, the Department of Public Works and Highways now has a new chief. An old hand at the Department of Public Works and Highways has returned as its new head under the new administration. Manuel Boruan has formally assumed the role of DPW Secretary following the ceremonial third over held at the first of the month at the DPW Central Office Multipurpose Hall. Boruan takes over from Acting Secretary Roger Mercado, who himself replaced now Senator Mark Pilar, who headed the department during the Duterte administration until resigning to run for the Senate. Secretary Bonoan started his career as a public servant at the DPWH back in 1966. A civil engineer, Bonoan worked in government until 2010 when he retired as senior undersecretary. Working in the private sector, Bonoan joined SMT Tollways Corporation, which is engaged in the construction, management, and operation of the extra space. Now back as the head of the DPWH, Secretary Bonoan faces the daunting task of completing unfinished flagship projects of the previous administration and pushing new infrastructure initiatives. The question in many people's minds is, 
How does the DPWH under Bonoan compare to the one under the past administration? Continuing, persons with disabilities will find it easier and more convenient to take the LRT2 sooner than later. The Light Rail Transit Authority has entered into a partnership with the Junior Chamber International Manila or JCI Manila to make the LRT2 more easily accessible to persons with disabilities or PWDs. The LRTA and JCI Manila have signed a memorandum of agreement to implement the Wheel Assist Project which aims to improve the commuting experience of PWDs. The Wheel Assist Project will see the installation of Braille stickers at the ticket vending machines to aid visually impaired passengers. Also, LRTA staff will undergo training on how to deal and engage with PWDs according to LRT Administrator Jeremy Regino. The training on non-visible disability sensitivity and awareness with basic Filipino language will be facilitated by TERPCAP, an accessibility service provider that enables organizations to become more accessible and inclusive. The training will help frontline personnel to be more knowledgeable and responsive to the needs of PWD passengers, he said. More really needs to be done to make local train systems like the LRT2 accessible, safe, and convenient for PWDs. And finally, air travel is getting back to normal as restrictions have eased. Demand for transport to and from airports have increased and a shuttle service has resumed operations to meet that need. The Ube Express Niia shuttle service has resumed operations. Premium point-to-point -point buses are now providing scheduled services from Araneta and Cubao to the four terminals of the Ninoy Aquino International Airport. P2P shuttle services are also now available between Robinson's Place Manila and the Niia Terminals 1, 2, 3, and 4. All premium Ube Express P2P buses are equipped with a global positioning system technology, Wi-Fi connection, and closed-circuit television cameras. These allow commuters to track the buses real-time on the Ube Express app. Fare from Araneta to the Nea Terminal is 200 pesos. Only beep card payments are accepted on P2P buses from Araneta. From the Nea Terminals, cash payments for fare are accepted. Fare from Robinson's Place Manila to the Nea Terminal is 150 pesos. Beep payments are only accepted from Robinson's Place Manila. Cash payments are also accepted from the terminals back to Robinson's Place Manila. The P2P shuttle service to and from the airport should make it more convenient for people who are scheduled to fly out from Naia. Those are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. Commuters are now having a tough time getting transport, especially at so-called rush hours, when seats and even standing spaces on the few buses on the road are hard to come by. But some bus operators are warning that the worst is yet to come. Morning Forum tackles commuters' woes and fears. As the economy reopens, as restrictions on travel are eased, the demand for transportation also increases. From the outset, transport authorities were aware that this would cause problems as demand for transport could outstrip supply. Capacity restrictions on public transport were eased and the LTFRB opened more routes for PUVs and PUJs. The government widened the implementation of programs meant to subsidize operations of buses and jeepneys while also looking out for the welfare of commuters, the medical frontliners, the APORs. There was the service contracting program, the Libre Sakai, cash subsidies, fuel subsidies, etc. However, public transport still remains a problem. The daily commute remained a struggle. It took hours to get from home to work and work to home. Then things just got worse. Fuel prices began to rise, steep increases that hit operators and drivers hard. Bus operators are now warning that they are thinking of scaling back operations if the price of diesel continues to rise. Published reports quoted among transport operators and Pilipinas Managing Director Juliet De Jesus saying, Asahan po ninyo, kung nagkulang man ng sasakyan nitong week na ito, baka mas marami po magkukulang by next week kung sakali po, ayan na naman, meron na namang increase sa diesel. And they are projected by the Department of Energy to increase. In published reports, the OE official said the price of diesel and kerosene will rise as the peso weakens against the dollar. Bus operators are talking about field day fewer buses or reducing the number of trips they ply daily even as the minimum fare for public utility jeepneys has been raised. 
The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board has approved a 1 peso provisional fare hike, bringing the minimum fare in PUGs in Metro Manila Region 3 and Region 4 to 10 pesos. After steadfastly refusing to adjust fares, the LTFRB said that while recognizing the plight of commuters facing increases in commodity prices and fares, it cannot be insensitive to the clamor and plight of the PUV operators and drivers responsible for ensuring a steady supply of public transport services. What can stave off the kind of transport crisis that bus operators are warning about? Aside from fare adjustments, bus operators are asking for other incentives include exception from or discounts on toll at extra space. In a published report, Juliet de Jesus was also quoted as saying, Di man pwedeng 100% mag-discount, kahit 50% will help. The Duterte administration and the DOT are under former Secretary Arthur Tugade have done a lot to help bus operators remain in business while also ensuring there is enough public transport during the COVID-19 pandemic. The looming bus shortage is now the challenge facing the Bongbong Marcos administration, which has been in office for less than a month. The president is still in the honeymoon period of his administration. How his administration handles the looming transportation crisis may determine how long the honeymoon will last. That's our Moro Forum this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. with us here on Motoring Today. We now have this week's Dalbo Motoring Tips, starting off with some road safety reminders from Toyota Motor Philippines. If you're on the main road at kung nasa stop line ka na, bigyang daan ang mga sasakyang galing sa lane na walang stop line. As seen on the animation, the blue car has the right of way. Keep this in mind to avoid meeting accidents on the road. Continuing with this week's edition of Motoring Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. Here's Fying Chopper this week. Fying Chopper lang, kaibigan. Ako si ka Jojo Martin, isang kapwa niyo Chopper, maging maayos sa pananamit tuwing papasada. Kung gusto natin makarami ng pasahero, gawin natin presentable ang ating mga sarili sa tuwing tayo ay magmamaneho. Ugaliin isuot ang uniform ng samahan na iyong kinabibilangan kapag papasada sa daan. Iwasang magsuot ng mga pambahay na damit, katulad ng sando at chinelas, kung ayaw mo ang pasahero ang magalit at umiwas. Tandaan, kapag maayos ang kasuotan, pasahero ay iyong kaibigan. Ito po si ka Jojo Martin, payong chopper lang kaibigan, mula sa isang kapwa niyo chopper. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Do what we love and love what we do. Work is play. Ford Ranger. Live the Ranger life. Welcome back to Motoring Today. World of Motorsports is next.
In other motorsports news, organizers of the 2022 Philippine Rallycross Series has released a championship point standing after four rounds. Nolitino leads in Group 1 with 80.5 points, followed by Caloy Galica in second with 69 and Teddy Galang in third with 55.5. Pibi Mandiola top Group 2 with 99.5 points, with Paul Santos in second with 76.5 and June Magda in third with 57. Group 3 has Paul Santos on top with 89.5 points, PB Mandiola in a close second with 88, and Barok Valurin a far third with 45. Paul Santos also leads Group 4 with 92.5 with PB Mandiola in second with 85, and Barok Valurin in third with 58. Another Santos, Paulo rules the open category with 98.5 with Arlan far down in second with 59, followed by Patrick Nang in third with 50. Juan de Mapili sits on top of the UV standings with 88. Paulo Santos and Luis Camacho are tied in the points with 77.5 in the AWD class. Paulo Villarta topped the RWD class with 105.5 points, while Luis Camacho is in solo lead of the pickup category with 112.5 points. And that's this week's World of Motorsports. We'll be back after this short break. Suzu D-Max into new heights. Our Carb TV is next on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. In Showcase, we take a look at the Black Series of the Mitsubishi Strada Athlete. There's something about black that appeals to many, be it clothes, accessories, and vehicles. Mitsubishi is apparently tapping into this by coming up with the Black Series Special Edition variants of its model lineup that includes the Expander, the Montero, and the Strada. The Black Series models sport Mitsubishi's Special Jet Black Mica. By the way, the Black Series also comes in white. But here, we are concentrating on the Black Series featuring Jet Black Mica that projects a tough and aggressive, yet a sleek look that Mitsubishi is going for. This is especially true in the Mitsubishi Strada Athlete Black Series Edition. All in black, the Mitsubishi Strada Athlete looks even more, well, athletic. The black trimmings on the front dynamic shield grille, the side mirrors with turn signals and styling bar. The blacked out rear spoiler and front bumpers as well as the 18-inch black alloy rims wrapped by 265, 60, or 18 tires all make the Strada Athlete stand out even more rumbling down the road or even while just parked. The side decals that extend from the rear door to the tailgate also make the Strada Athlete all the more an attention magnet. The blacked out Strada Athlete looms even larger with its listed dimensions 5,305mm long, 1,850mm wide, and 1,795mm tall, with a 3,000mm long wheelbase and 220mm minimum ground clearance. For those who'd like to know, the interior dimensions of the Strada Athlete pickup bed are as follows. 1,520 millimeters long, 1,470 millimeters wide, and 475 millimeters high. It also comes with cargo hooks. Mitsubishi rolled out the Black Series editions of the Strada Athlete 4-wheel drive AT and Strada Athlete 2-wheel drive. Some exterior features shared by both include daytime running lights, LED headlamps and leveling device, LED type rear combination lamps, front undercover, front skin plate, front and rear fog lamps, high mount stop lamp, door sash, Variable intermittent windshield wipers with washer, front towing hook. The Black Series Edition features the same interior features and trim of the Strada Athlete. Orange and black leather upholstery with the Athlete part for the seat and trims. Leather wrapped orange stitching on gear shift and the parking brake lever that match the door trim. 
The four-spoke steering wheel tilts and telescope is wrapped by leather with orange stitching and comes with switches and buttons for audio and cruise control. The driver's seat power just eight ways. The front seats have adjustable headdress. The rear bench seat for three also has three adjustable headdress as well as a fold down center armrest. The dash features gloss black and silver accents and an instrument panel with high contrast meter and LCD type multi information display, which can be controlled by switches on the steering wheel. Standard comfort and convenience features include power windows, power door locks, bottle holders and door pockets and doors, cup holders, on floor console and rear center armrest, grab handles, sunglass holder, map lamp, day and night room mirror. The Strata Athlete comes with what Mitsubishi calls keyless operation system and smart keyless entry. There's a single zone automatic air conditioning system on the two wheel drive, dual zone with rear air circulator on the four wheel drive. The infotainment system features a 7 inch touchscreen display with AM, FM, GPS navigation, Bluetooth, auxiliary in, and USB ports and mirror link. It plays through six speakers. There are also twin USB ports in the rear for charging gadgets. For those who still use them, there's a cigarette lighter as well as an ashtray. Parking the Strata pickup is no longer challenging with reverse camera on the athlete with the four-wheel drive also getting reverse sensors. The Strata is powered by a 2.4-liter Mivec intercooled and turbocharged direct injection diesel engine that generates 181 horsepower and 430 Nm of torque. The Strata athlete is only available with a 6-speed automatic transmission complemented by Teptronic paddle shifters. The Athlete 4-wheel drive comes with Super Select 4-wheel drive with off-road mode. The suspension system is your standard front independent wishbone with coil spring and rigid elliptical leaf springs in the rear. The brake system features ventilated disc in front and leading trailing drums in the rear. The Strata comes standard with anti-lock brake system, electronic brake force distribution, and brake assist. Standard safety features also include driver and passenger side airbags, 3-point ELR seat belster 5, either anchors and isofix, speed sensing door locks, laminated windshield. A Black Series Strata Athlete 2-wheel drive already comes with active stability and traction control, hill start assist and hill descent control. The 4-wheel drive variant gets a fuller complement of driver assist functions that include hill descent control. Forward Collision Mitigation System, Ultrasonic Missile Acceleration Mitigation System, Wide Spot Warning System, and Auto High Beam. Full tank capacity is placed at 75 liters. Black Series edition of the Strada Athlete is all about the aesthetics. But it must be said that the Athlete already has a full complement of interior convenience and safety features, as well as other power and handling expected in a good, reliable pickup truck. That's our featured vehicle of this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Drive worry free with Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program with a free 24-hour nationwide roadside assistance included with your comprehensive auto insurance. Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car wherever you are. Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program, 100% worry-free driving. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Suzuki El Tiga. Seven-seater in style. Wow, 
Welcome back to Motoring Today. The auto industry now takes center stage. Nissan Philippines has formally inaugurated the 53rd member of its local dealership network, Nissan Manila Bay. The dealership located at Branco Avenue in Asiana City in Paranaque is part of the Gateway Group, the same group that is the exclusive dealer in the country of the Leaf, Nissan's full electric sedan. The first to bear the new Nissan logo, Nissan Manila Bay features a 6-car display room, 9 service base, and a Leaf charging station with specialized facilities and trained experts to serve Nissan Leaf customers. The inauguration was attended by Asako Hoshino, Executive Vice President and Chairperson of Japan ASEAN Management Committee for Nissan Motor Co. LTD, who spoke of the significance of the new lead dealership and the partnership with the Gateway Group. Nissan is truly shifting the focus to the electrification and autonomous technology. And I really like to see Nissan Philippines to grow with the uh, Nissan's focus towards uh, electrification and the autonomous tech so that the uh, society will move towards zero emission, CO2 free, and as well as the zero fatality from the traffic to accident. So uh, together with the Gateway uh, company, uh, I really like to see the Nissan Philippines uh, to grow together to make the uh, Nissan brand uh, very strong uh, in Philippines. Also at the event was Juan Manuel Hoyos, Nissan Philippines president, who called the inauguration a celebration of the partnership with Gateway. Together with Nissan Motor Leadership, I will thank you for being reliable and dedicated to our company. At the Lodge Gateway Group, CEO of Marking Goho revealed that the whole Nissan dealership network was offered the opportunity to become a dealer for the Leaf and Nissan's EV lineup. Only Gateway applied for the dealership. No one else was willing to invest. So today we are proud to say that Gateway and Nissan are the pioneers of EV in the Philippines. We have EV chargers in all our Nissan dealerships, four in Metro Manila, including this one in Manila Bay, one in Cebu and two in Davao. Gateway President Raymond Basubas sees Nissan Manila Bay helping build the Nissan branch and achieve a wider reach in the market. It's very accessible via the North Luzon Expressway to the north of Luzon, the South Luzon Expressway to the south of Luzon. There's a huge bus terminal, the PITX, a few meters away from this showroom. And of course, this is very close to all the airports in the Philippines, you know, making this area a very good showcase for the Nissan brand you know to achieve uh, to reach a wider market in the country if you're one for supercars and ultra high segment SUVs Aston Martin Manila has great updates the DBX 707 the fastest and most powerful SUV is coming soon also soon to be available for viewing are a white DBX and Vantage F1 edition Aston Martin Manila has also begun taking orders for the Valhalla scheduled for a delivery in the second half of 2023. Get those order in as only 999 units will be produced worldwide. Meanwhile, McLaren Manila DB Philippines Motorsports is planning to launch a service center in the metro by the end of 2023. The service center will serve as a temp showroom for McLarens while waiting for a state-of-the-art facility to be built at the Bonifacio Global City in the next three to four years. DBP Philippines Motorsports says it will soon accept gray market McLarens for service with an enrollment fee. Mitsubishi Motor Philippines is giving its after-sales arm a new name, which is more like a slogan, Mitsubishi Motors Cares. But it is more than a slogan. According to Mitsubishi, rebranding its after-sales service arm signifies a recommitment towards a better vehicle ownership experience. Mitsubishi Motor Philippines President Takeshi Hara describes the rebranding as making customers remain worry-free and confident that they are leaving their vehicles in the best brands whenever they enter Mitsubishi service workshops. Takeshi Hara adds that Mitsubishi wants to provide utmost driving pleasure, safety, and satisfaction not just through the product itself but also in all aspects when it comes to after sales. Mitsubishi Motor Care centers around three key areas convenience, reliability, and time. Convenience offered by the Mitsubishi Service Connect app that allows online bookings with records of registered vehicles easily accessed by owners to ensure specific needs are met in and outside of service shops. Reliability comes from ensuring availability of Mitsubishi genuine parts and accessories. Time means ensuring speedy yet efficient action through Mitsubishi Quick Service, which guarantees the periodic maintenance service is completed within one hour from the issuance of repair order until the vehicle release.
Suzuki is bringing back its highly successful For The Win promo that makes it more affordable to own four of its popular model lineup. The Suzuki XL7 is offered with a discount of 35,000 pesos or a low down payment of 140,000 pesos. All variants of the dependable Suzuki carries available with cash discounts of 23,000 pesos or low down payment prices starting at 82,000 pesos. The desire comes with an arms reach with cash discounts of up to 60,000 pesos or low down payment of as low as 63,000 pesos. The Espresso is offered with down payments of as low as 59,000 pesos or a discount of 32,000 pesos. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, please don't forget to check us out on social media. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now on its 36th year of continuing service to the general motor in public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. On behalf of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.